Thanks, Daniel. Appreciate the invite. So to sort of set the, uh, set the stage, let's talk about um, what, what I see at least is the typical, uh, the problem to the typical approach to employer branding. And if you think about what you've experienced, I'm sure you can relate to this, is the first one issue is that messages largely are interchangeable and therefore meaningless. So employers are basically saying the same thing. So it's a great place to work, you get a chance to make a difference, you get to work with smart people, do important work, etc. And these statements, these claims are made with no real evidence of their truth. And so because everybody's saying basically the same thing and there's no example backing up why they're making those claims, then most employer branding messages get lost in a sea of sameness. And that's where storytelling comes in to uh, save the day. Because stories make your message more interesting, they make your message more unique because the stories you tell are unique to your organization. Also because they provide evidence for why you say there's opportunity for professional development or this is a very ethical um, organization. Because you're giving evidence, it makes your message far more believable and you know how skeptical you are about marketing messages and so are uh, job applicants and people in the labor market. And finally, stories make your message so much more persuasive because of the factors uh, and the, the um, uh, points already made. So if you want your message to be more captivating and more persuasive, use stories. So in this webinar, here's what we're going to talk about. First, how to ta uh, translate the key talent attraction drivers. In other words, what today's talented employee is looking for in an employer and how to translate that into stories. Then we're going to talk about how to translate your cultural values and your organization's personality into stories. And then last but not least, how to collect, curate, and communicate these stories. So let's talk about the first, translating talent attraction drivers. So obviously you, I'm just going to get this, the, there we go, command board, wait so I can see the whole slide. Um, obviously you want to make sure you're delivering what today's talent wants. If this is the kind of workplace that you have or the modern equivalent of a sweatshop, then that's obviously, it doesn't matter how clever the stories are or how fascinating the stories are, there's stories about a work experience that no talented employee wants. So the first step is to understand what are the talent attraction drivers. So number one, know what today's talent is looking for. Number two, find out what your key talent cares about because as you know that different professions and different demographics have their own unique recipe of attraction drivers. So you need to find out not just what the research says, what talent wants, but do interviews with your most talented employees to find out what they care about. And then make sure you're delivering this before you tell the labor market that you're delivering this. And actually, I found number three to be one of the biggest weaknesses in the whole employer branding field is that employers oftentimes spend more money and effort on crafting a great message than they do creating a great employee experience. And then after you're sure you're actually delivering on your brand promise, then say, how can we translate this into examples and stories? So let's, I'm going to walk you through some of the uh, most important talent drivers, and I'm going to go through them quickly except for those which I will give you an example of how to use a story to illustrate that we satisfy that driver. 
So as I'm sure you know, especially the millennial employee is especially important or it's especially important to them to feel like they're part of an organization that does good in the world and that they're part of an ethical organization. So rather than just say, you know, we're good corporate citizens and we're very ethical, what would be examples of stories illustrating that in your organization? Also, one of the things that we know about human nature and human nature at work is that human beings have a hunger to be part of something greater than themselves. And even though that's hardwired into the human psyche, again, with this younger generation that has been coached and encouraged to make their mark on the world, it's even more important for the newer generation of talent to feel like, if I sign up with you, am I going to be part of something great? Now also, don't you want to be part of the A-team? Don't you want to know that you're part of a really elite team that has really high standards as opposed to working with a bunch of slackers or B and C level members? Well, so do other very talented employees. So it's really important to communicate in your branding message that this is an organization that has elite level talent. Now let me give you an example of that in action. So this is Shannon Kinney, who is the founder and CEO of Dream Local, a digital marketing agency. And I saw her uh, speak and be part of a panel at a conference a while back. I was really impressed by a story that she told about the beer fridge in their company. And I actually have an article coming out soon that's titled, well, it depends on what the title that gets accepted, but the working title is, It's Not About the Beer in the Beer Fridge. And she talked about the things that she does to have a great culture. Now, I don't know if you can see, it wouldn't, it's not intuitively recognizable, um, but the uh, little stuffed animal in her uh, hands is a honey badger plush toy and the honey badger is their mascot and if you haven't ever seen the honey badger video uh, on YouTube I highly recommend that you watch it and so they capture the personality of their culture and the go for it and go the extra mile ethos by ha by the honey badger and say and talking about employees being honey badgers and how can we be more like the honey badger well anyway i did an interview with her after the conference because i was so impressed with with what she had to say about what she did to create a, a really passionate culture and one of the stories she shared with me, and this, so this speaks to the desire that A-level talent has to work with other A-level talent. And she talked about they were the uh, responsible for uh, digital media, media relations, et cetera, for the Maine Lobster Festival. They, live, they uh, are located in Maine, even though they have a national presence. And she described this situation where she had an intern from uh, D.C. that was, was uh, staying with her, her parents over the summer college intern, and she did an internship with Dream Local. And she was so impressed with how Dream Local treated the client, the Maine Lobster Festival, how they were constantly looking for opportunities to provide more value. So they were they were doing sort of um, uh, ongoing sit reps with uh, uh, participants in the festival and feeding that information back to the uh, lobster festi festival uh, board uh, to to give the opportunity to make decisions and changes on the fly, et cetera. And so this young woman was so taken by the attitude there that when it was over she applied for a job and so you see the hashtag honey badger love and little honey badgers on the, uh, the glazed donuts and she actually uh, where Shannon was expecting to do a end of the internship debrief and ended up being a 
a I would love to work here and here's why I'm a honey badger uh, conversation. And so that simple, fun little story is an example of the kind of employer branding story that Shannon would use and Dream Local would use to communicate this is the A-team. So what would be examples of situations in your organization that illustrate elite performance? Okay, so we've covered these. Let's move on to a couple of more. So highly talented employees obviously want challenging work and also they want to make a difference. And Back to human understanding human nature at work, one of the most important drives in, uh, for human beings is the belief that I matter, that my life matters. And so helping them see, helping the job candidate, and then once employees are on board, helping them see on an ongoing basis that you make a difference, really important. And so using stories to communicate that. So let me give you another example of using a story to communicate you, when you work here, you have the opportunity to make a difference. So this comes from Safari, and they are, I guess you'd call them an aggregator and disseminator of ebooks, uh, uh, online courses, conference keynotes, et cetera. So they select the best of the best for professional development, and then they sell subscriptions to individuals and then uh, employ, you know, organizations. And I was interviewing their chief technology officer, Liza Daly, about, about their culture. And she said one of the things that the CEO did to get people to, quote, uh, eat the dog food um, was to actually require people to consume their offering. So whether it was an ebook or an online course, et cetera. Well, one of their engineers chose a book not on engineering, but on hiring bias. And he became really passionate about this book and started sharing it with colleagues. And this major uh, intranet book club took off based on this. And out of that discussion, so it wasn't just like, oh, isn't this cool? We're learning more about what we sell. Out of that discussion, the recruiting department started looking at the recruiting ads, and I love this because Liza said how you know they had the classic tech recruiting ads that are like super you know over caffeinated, hyper alpha male. You know we're looking for people who will you know crawl over crushed glass to finish projects to delight our customers. You know that sort of thing, and so they used the ideas that came out of this book and, and out of this book club to rewrite their ads to speak to women and also people from non-traditional, non-techie backgrounds. And because of that, out of that book club, now over half of their tech hires are female. No, they either over half are females or they increase their female high, uh, tech hires by 50, over 50%. Whichever it is, pretty big impact coming out of an employee book group. So that's an example of a story that let's say you were at a uh, uh, a talent expo or you're talking with somebody on the line and they're they're talking about um, you know what's it like to work there. That would be an example of a story that Safari would use to say, you know, here you get to make a difference. Okay, what else do employees want? They want autonomy. Obviously, work-life balance is a big issue. So what are examples and stories that you could share that speak to employees getting to make their own decisions and have decision latitude and, and get to have a life? And then, as you know, especially with the, the younger generation of uh, employees and those right out of college, hugely focused on, is there opportunity here for professional development? Are there opportunities for career advancement? Uh, 
And so I want to give you two examples of stories that speak to that because obviously if we're talking about how to use stories to communicate your employer brand, um, I'm not going to just do bullet points and not actually do stories. So here's an awesome story. And this comes from, as you can see, Debbie Peterson, marketing manager at MetroStar Systems. MetroStar Systems is an IT firm. And I became acquainted with them by uh, interviewing their co-founder and CEO, Ali Manacheri, because uh, he was speaking at a um, uh, conference that I was um, uh, doing writing for. And I was so impressed with him, um, I wanted to find out from employees from their point of view, what he did to make this such a great culture. And so I, one of those was Debbie Peterson. And she shared this story. She, was, she had only been working at MetroStar Systems for a few months when Ali came up to her and said that he wanted her to facilitate a strategic visioning session in a, a couple of months uh, from, from now, from the conversation. And she was kind of scared, not surprisingly, A, because she's a newbie, and B, she had never done a strategic visioning uh, facilitation before. And it was interesting because she said to me, you know, I know the typical thing that a leader would do would hire an outside consultant and they would facilitate it. And the fact that he asked me to do it really meant a lot to me. And he didn't just leave her hanging in the wind. Obviously, he worked with her and offered any support that she needed. And she just hit it out of the proverbial park, got lots of praise. And you think about what that meant to her. And she said, you know, that really told me this is the kind of place I want to work in for a long time because it's clear they value professional development. So that's an example of a story that when Debbie goes out and about at conferences and is looking for talented people or other employees at MetroStar Systems or their official recruiters, that's the kind of story that they would tell to communicate. Here you have opportunities, tremendous opportunities for professional development. Also, notice that that story also touches on the drivers five and six, challenging work and the opportunity to make a difference. Here's another example, and this is more of an example than a story, and I'll, I will describe what I mean by the difference between an example and a story in a moment. But this comes from, as you can see, Brad Parler, Digital Communications Administrator at Blinds.com. Blinds.com is famous for having just an amazing customer-centric culture. Happy employees obviously give great customer service. And one of the things that they pride themselves in terms of their employee value proposition is tremendous opportunity for career advancement. I'm just going to pause and drink so I don't keep coughing at you. Okay, I'm back. And so one of the examples that they use in hiring conversations is Brad, who when he was first hired at Blinds, there was no digital communications department. He was just a, I think he was a call center employee who had a real interest in digital communication, digital marketing, video production, and he would use his talent on a sort of like a volunteer basis whenever they wanted to do some type of uh, videoing and media. And his manager saw that he had both interest and talent in that and worked with Brad to create this new position. So rather than just saying there are lots of opportunities for career advancement, sharing stories and examples that illustrate that. So. Number one, learning how to, we're talking about translating talent attraction drivers. Well, how do you translate them into examples and stories? Well, ask the question, simple question, what are examples of us satisfying that driver? And then what's an actual story that communicates us satisfying this driver? So let me give you an example 
of the difference between an example and a story. So this is, comes from, as you can see, Steam Whistle Brewery. Now, the woman in the middle of the two guys is Nicole George. And I interviewed her as part of my research on what makes great cultures great, great places to work great. And she said, one of the things that I love about Greg Taylor, he's a co-founder and, and CEO of Steam Whistle Brewery, is how he's so encouraging um, in terms of asking employees for their ideas and input. And it doesn't just have to be, you know, employees who've been in the field for years and years. Now, she could just say that. So let's say she's at a a talent expo and she said that to a, a really talented potential recruit. That's that's kind of cool, but it, it's like, okay, anybody can say that. It's not really memorable. But then she gave me an example. She said, so, you know, I can be in a marketing brainstorming meeting with, you know, 20 other people around a conference room who all have, you know, a decade or more experience in the field and it could be pretty intimidating for you know a 26 year old not that long out of college and so we're brainstorming and Greg is you know always saying hey Nicole or Brendan what's your I what, what's your take on this or what ideas do you have and so leadership actively invites that opinion as opposed to it's every man and woman for themselves and so I, can't you just picture that scenario where you're around a table, especially let's say if you're an introvert and it's either hard to get in a word edgewise with the uh, uber extroverts or it, you're just, um, you know, there's space to, to, um, to offer your input, but maybe you're kind of reticent because you're new in the field and just how welcoming it would feel to have a leader in sharing that with me is she she painted a picture she gave me an example of what that looked and sounded like but it wasn't really a story I mean there's no it wasn't like it was bad it just wasn't in a story it was an example now what would a story version of that be well a story version would go sort of like this so she said one of the things that's so cool about steam whistle is how everybody's ideas are welcome, welcomed and res respected. It's not just you have to be in, in the business for 10 or 20 years before you're taken seriously. I'll give, I'll give you an example. Um, a couple of weeks ago, we were talking about the uh, possibility of rebranding uh, our, our, um, our product. And you know, there was people around the table who, you know, there was John who had like 10 years in the business, Marianne with 12, you know, say a few other names. And these are some really confident, expert opinion kind of people. And I had some thoughts that I was kind of thinking, ah, it might be like too outside the box. If I say it, they're going to think I really don't know what I'm talking about. And then suddenly Greg goes, hey, Nicole. Um, you're a creative person. Like, what do you think? What's what's something we're not looking at? And so I'm like, all right, I'll bring it on. And so I said, hey, what about you know dot dot dot? And then the story goes on. So that would be an example of a story version versus um, what I shared earlier. How Nicole gave an example. So a story actually tells sort has sort of like a beginning, middle, and end. Okay, so. That's the Translate Talent Attraction Drivers. And let's talk about, and feel free to, if you have questions, put those right in the chat box. And I will um, pause and answer. So let's move on to Translate Cultural Values and Personality. So in the purest sense, employer branding is not about what is the marketplace want it's about who are we so employer branding actually in the purest sense or branding in general is an introspective process if it's going to be authentic it's like who are we not 
who do we want people to think we are. That being said, back to the picture of the sweatshop and the stressed out guy, that if who you are isn't appealing to today's talent, then all is lost. So it's, it's critical to make sure your employer brand and your employer value proposition is relevant. Okay, so let's, let's go on to number two. I'm just going to get this out of the way so I can actually read this. This is something that a, a human resource VP for a great employer said to me. I wish I could just bottle up our culture and be able to give people a whiff so they could know what it's like to work here. And I still remember that day when she said that to me. And I said, well, you can. It's called storytelling. Because that's what stories do. If you know how to tell them well, it's like giving a person a whiff of your culture. So how do you do that? Well, List your cultural values. So what are your cultural values? Hopefully they're someplace <laughs> um, documented and that they're, ac and they're not just you know, a group of platitudes, but they actually uh, inform and inspire people's behaviors. List the qualities embodied by your employer brand and your organization's personality, and then find examples and stories that communicate this. So pretty straightforward, but let's get to the how-to. So the how-to is asking these questions. What are examples of this value in action? So if you say high integrity, okay, what are examples of your organization demonstrating high integrity? And then remember the difference between examples and stories. What stories can we tell that communicate this in action? And then what stories can we tell that capture who we are and what it's like to work here? So let me give you one of my favorite stories. So this is Diana Oreck, who's the VP of Leadership Development at Ritz-Carlton. And a couple of years ago, we co-presented on uh, storytelling in all aspects of talent management at a recruiting conference. And uh, she shared some of the awesome Ritz-Carlton stories and to me Ritz-Carlton is the gold standard and organizations that knows how to use storytelling not just to communicate their corporate brand but their employer brand and to use storytelling to c inspire and engage employees and provide ongoing training through storytelling. And what I mean by ongoing training, just a quick um, somewhat aside, Chip and Dan Heath and Made to Stick, which I definitely recommend. Anybody involved in influence uh, needs to read Made to Stick, and it's, it's all about why some messages stick and others evaporate and, pe and are long forgotten. And one of the uh, points that they make is they by six characteristics of quote sticky messages and remember think about whether it's a job fair or an employee a, a job prospect going through multiple recruiting pages if you're just simply talking in abstract terms you will be lost in that sea of sameness I talked about before but if you tell stories you separate yourself out. And so they, they, t they identify storytelling as one of the, C, the six key principles of sticky messages. But here's what they said. They said stories provide both inspiration and simulation. So that's why storytelling is also great for providing, uh, for inspiring employees to greatness, but also providing simulation because it describes what greatness looks like. So, one of the corporate, the key value, cultural values at Ritz-Carlton is what they call radar on and antenna up. They also talk about anticipating and satisfying unexpressed needs. So it's being alert for opportunities to satisfy needs that guests aren't explicitly asking to be satisfied. So here's, here's one of my favorite stories that she shared at, um, at our program. So at uh, one of their properties, this little girl loses her tooth uh, either in the pool or someplace around the pool. 
and she is extremely distressed and says to her mom and dad, how can the tooth fairy, you know, bring me, you know, whatever tooth fairy swag <laughs> happens in their house, um, because we're not at home, the tooth fairy's not going to be able to find us, find me, because we're on vacation. So she was pretty, pretty upset. Well, the family, you know, finished their swim, and then they went out on the town. That evening, when they came back into the hotel, they walked into the lobby, and there, standing in the lobby, is the tooth fairy. And the little girl knows instantly who the tooth fairy is waiting for. And she runs up and jumps into the arms of the tooth fairy, gives her a big hug, and she gets some major you know, swanky tooth fairy swag um, uh, little uh, you know, basket or bag or whatever it was. Now, is that just too cool or what? When I do customer service training, I love to share that story because, I mean, does that not just speak to wow customer service? And so that's an example of taking their cultural value radar on and antenna up and bringing it to life with a story. Now, notice also, remember one of the the, the drivers of attracting talent is they want to work with the A-team. Think about also how that attracts the best of the best uh, job recruits, the people who are most uh, determined to work in an organization that provides great customer service. So here's an example of a, uh, this is what it's like to work here story. So as you see, this is Amir Zanosi, Chief Strategy Officer at at Zoomf. So Zoomf does digital uh, marketing, all aspects of digital marketing, including, so basically what they do is help organizations get the biggest bang for the buck out of their digital marketing and digital communication efforts. And so uh, several of their clients are professional Team. So like New York Giants, Baltimore Orioles, Washington Capitals. And so Amir was telling me this story about what they do to make it a culture that where employees do want to go the extra mile. And he shared this really cool story with me, how they were approached by a uh, professional team that said that they needed a specific thing done with their big uh, screen in the stadium that none of the larger competitors were able to do. They said it's impossible. But because of the ethos at Zoomf is uh, we're all about mission impossible, that their attitude is we'll find a way. Well, they found a way. And they were able to, and it was something about, I'm not a like super digital uh, technology guy, but it's something about being able to broadcast tweets, Facebook posts, and Instagrams real time. So n with no delay and then also with no interference with pop-up menus, et cetera. Anyway, whatever they, they were able to do something that nobody else was able to do. Now, here's the cool thing. I mean, that's cool. But um, so that's a story that you would tell in terms of you get to be part of the A-team if you work here. But the other thing that he shared was he said, you know, when the um, marketing team and I, we get to go to conferences and we get, you know, our clients love us. And so they, you know, um, they show us the love whenever we talk with them at conferences, but the poor developers who are, you know, making these amazing, um, you know, products, all they get is the bug reports and what needs to be fixed. And so what they've done on a number of occasions is brought members of the development team to these events to see what their massive screen that they made possible looks like in front of 90,000 people, including like going out onto the field, et cetera. So I just thought that was such a cool example 
of an organization that gets it in terms of knowing how to connect employees with the impact that they have. So that that driver of the desire to make a difference. So that's an example that not only communicates you get to make a difference here, but also what, remember I started off with what it's like to work here, that it communicates this is an organization that really cares about employees and wants them to know we see and, and value the great work that you do. So that's uh, translating cultural values and personality. Now let's go to the, um, the last one. How do you collect, curate, and communicate the stories? So back to our friends at Blinds.com. They actually are constantly collecting stories from customers and sending them to employees. So customers email or maybe a voicemail even um, why they thought the, their customer uh, you know their consultant uh, rocked they would send that to all employees so are you collecting those stories then there's also collecting stories from employees now there's a company in Maine named Volk Packaging that has won multiple awards including um, you know best places to work awards one of the things and they have a they're famous for having a really kind encouraging enthusiastic culture and a very servant leadership kind of culture. And one of the things that they do to have to foster a customer service culture is to share emails from employees about how team members pull together to wow customers. So you see this email um, from Greg Milligan to everyone in the company. And so this speaks to, I just want to, I always like to talk about the bigger picture, not just the, the immediate topic. This is an example of using stories for both inspiration and simulation. When you share stories about people pulling together, employees pulling together to delight the customer, it inspires people to higher levels of greatness, inspiration, and then the simulation, it also provides what I think of as almost like um, virtual training videos because you're describing what happened, you're using the theater of the mind, you're painting a picture of what happened, and employees get a sense of this is what greatness looks like. In this case, what great teamwork and customer centricity looks like. Now, you also want to collect who we are employee stories. So who we are employee stories are stories not where employees talk about how they delighted the customer pulled together uh, to do something great, but they're stories actually about individual employees. Because you think about it, you really want to work with good people, don't you? And one of the things that we know with research with millennials as they are especially focused on are these the kind of people I want to work with and so part of your employer branding messaging needs to be around this is who we are as people and so sharing stories about employees and because today's employee and you know this, this next thing I'm going to say, today's employee really has an integrated work and personal life experience that they don't want to be just a cardboard cutout worker bee and not bring their personality to work, that you want your stories to capture the totality of the person. So you've seen by now uh, Steve Ehrlich, Global VP of Client Development at TMP Worldwide Advertising Communication. I interviewed him uh, a while back because uh, TMP does some great work in employer branding. And he shared um, an example with one of their clients, Marks & Spencer, or M&S. They're a UK um, retail store that also obviously like everybody has an online presence and they in their recruiting part of their site they tell stories about employees so this is a young woman named Sarah Bond and there's a whole blog entry about her story and how she was she and her single mom with a little child how they were homeless 
um, they were struggling and how through some like apprenticeship program or something through M&S she got this job in their their beauty products um, division of the store and how much she loves the job etc 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 so it really humanizes the company and gives people a sense of who are the people that work here so you want to collect those so approaches to collecting stories now there are two approaches so remember uh, Ritz Carlton radar on and antenna up so you're always on the lookout you're always very mindful of like cool things that happen in your organization and like hmm is that story worthy and this is actually something uh, back to Debbie Peterson the um, marketing manager at Metro Star Systems she said that rather than doing focus groups or interviews with employees around so why do you like working here what's an example of why you think it's great to work here she just is always paying attention to what people are talking about you know whether it's in the break room etc about cool things and what they're really excited about and you know sort of like note to self it really excites them that they get to be part of multidisciplinary teams or they love it when they get access they, they love they you know um, Sarah said recently how much she loved it that she got to um, share her strategy idea to Ollie uh, on an impromptu basis and he asked her to um, you know flush it out and then come back and like do a formal presentation to the leadership team you know, whatever it is so you could do radar on antenna up or you could do guided interviews and what I find what I found over the years is you really need to prep people if you want them to give you useful information and if if you um, want more info on how to prep people you could just email me when this is over I actually I put together a resource page um, that has a bunch of articles and other uh, resources for you so curating your stories so you've collected the stories now what are you going to do with them well you want to curate them and use searchable keywords so keywords like your specific cultural values or let's say fun um, team work you know whatever it is so that you can easily uh, search your database for stories to use and then you want to identify archetypal stories so what are those key stories that are like a level above the other stories in terms of their ability to truly capture who you are as a company and, a, and as an employer and that's something that really I think would be wise to be a, a group effort with employees from all aspects of the organization because well I'll tell you the because in a, in a minute this is something you know how when somebody says something that you so strongly agree with and they're the first person other than you that you've heard say it and so you think they're brilliant <laughs> um, one of the things that Steve said that I thought was brilliant was was this 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 is not a ac well, verbatim quote it's a summary is that organizations need to be hiring journalists to tell their stories not offload it to the HR department because storytelling is an art and a science it's not a an amateur activity and I don't mean that as a diss to HR but there are ways of telling stories that are compelling in ways that aren't and I'll tell you I do a lot of interviews in my work including interviews with thought leaders and even really bright thought leaders even with prep oftentimes have a hard time telling good stories or even knowing how to tell a story so you need to if you want to do this right you need to make sure you have pros doing this so how do you do this use a professional to craft and refine and use these stories in all channels of employer branding and recruiting and then this is really critical communicate to your volunteer recruiting firm which is your happy employees that all employees if they're happy as you know are your best source of referrals help them do their job well <laughs> in referring 
And so if you really want to turbocharge your employer branding uh, uh, strategy and process, make sure all employees can tell your core or archety archetypal stories. So that's the, the third and last how to collect, curate, and communicate. Whoops, okay. So that's 